Hello guys, Colin here. Today we're going to take a look at this reamp box from DIYRE. This build-it-yourself kit was suggested to me by Richard Keel on Twitter, so shout out to him for the excellent suggestion. For anyone asking what is a reamp, it's a device that allows you to take audio recorded directly into your interface and send it back through your physical amps and effects to capture the sound with microphones. This is a remarkably useful tool if you want the flexibility to change the tone of a recorded part after you've tracked it. By using a DI to record an insurance take, you can reamp to change a tone that isn't working in your mix, or simply to record amp sounds later at a more convenient time when you can crank things loud. The reamp box is necessary for this because it changes the impedance of the signal leaving your audio interface to something that your amp can work with. If you were to connect your audio interface output directly to an amp, you would get a lot of noise, a very weak signal and just poor results overall. I'm going to do this video in the form of a let's build and I'll explain the process from start to finish. This is a pretty simple kit so it's great for beginners. Everything you'll need is included, the only things you'll have to supply are a soldering iron and the appropriate skill to use one. So let's take a look at what we have in this kit. The enclosure, side panels, and foam foot pad can all be placed aside for the moment. We're not gonna need these until the end. This is the printed circuit board. As you can see, it holds only a few components and it's been clearly screen printed to identify where everything goes. This small bag contains our XLR balanced input, quarter inch jack output, volume potentiometer and knob, the switch that will be used as a ground lift, and we also have a 15 kilo ohm resistor. The important part is this transformer. This is what's going to do the work of transforming our balanced low impedance line level signal from our interface into an unbalanced high impedance instrument level signal that can work with our amplifiers. I'm going to use the resistance setting on my multimeter to check that both the primary and secondary coils on the transformer are reading correctly. Both coils should read somewhere between 125 and 150 ohms for this particular transformer. Now we can start soldering components to the board, starting with the 15 kilo ohm resistor. Bend the legs, insert from the printed side, and then solder on the reverse. Clip off the excess legs with some wire cutters when done. The output socket should slot right into place and we can solder the six connections there as should the potentiometer, so they're all five of its pins. The transformer requires to be installed the correct way around. This semicircular notch in the transformer matches up with the one indicated on the screen print. So do the eight legs, being careful not to hold the iron on for too long. The very fine copper wire in the transformer can be damaged by prolonged application of heat. The XLR input slots right in and the three contacts can be soldered. There are also holes on the PCB for the plastic indexing pins. These obviously don't require soldering. Lastly, the switch. Position it onto the board, but before soldering, bring back the side panel. Screw it onto the XLR input with the screws provided, ensuring that the switch sits comfortably in its hole. Once the alignment is correct, solder the pins on the switch to the PCB. With the PCB completely populated and soldered, we can now slide it into its enclosure. There are square shaped runners and the inside of the enclosure that the PCB will slide into. If done correctly, the side panel will have matched up with the enclosure body, so screw it into place. Note that the screws will self tap into the aluminium, so take it slow and don't force the screw. It's a good idea to reverse the screw by half a turn every couple of turns to ensure that the threads cut properly and you don't end up stripping the screw heads. With both side panels on, stick the foam to the base of the box and now it's time to test it out. I've got some guitar recorded into Pro Tools here. I took this in directly through my DI box. This is what it sounds like with nothing applied. At this stage, we either have the option of adding an amp sim or reamping it to capture the sound of a real amp, which is what we're going to do right now. I have my reamp box connected to both my interface output and the start of my signal chain, which feeds into the Victory Kraken. The sound will be picked up by the two microphones on the Laney cabinet, the Sennheiser 609 Dynamic and the British Film Industries M8 Ribbon. 
playing back the audio in Pro Tools will send the signal to the reamp box and then on to the amplifier. The amplifier will see the playback as if it's a guitar connected to the input. This allows us to fiddle with knobs and effects and find the sound that we want. So that's an overview of reamp boxes and in particular this DIY RE kit. I'll put the DIY RE website in the description box underneath this video should you want to buy and build your own. They also have a range of other devices like DI boxes and microphones should you want to experiment further. All the build instructions are available for free online so you can check out exactly what's required before you buy to see if it's something you're capable of putting together yourself. Building this kit gave me a lot more satisfaction than I would have got just buying a pre-made reamp box. So if you like to get your hands dirty, then I highly recommend going DIY. If I missed anything in this explanation or anything I said wasn't clear, please do leave me a comment and uh, I'll try my best to get back to you. You can also hit the subscribe button if you want to see all my new content as it comes out. Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff and there's other videos you might not have seen. But that's all for just now guys. Keep it loud and I'll uh, see you later.